I think we have a few moments, and if the panel's agreeable, we can take some questions from the audience. Great. Any questions? Oh, this is so disappointing. You're killing the faculty member We've that got, I used uh, to some, be. We got some folks here from the Coast Guard Recruiting Command if anybody's looking to sign up today. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have a question here, sir. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So the discussion early on, I believe Dr. Walston may have brought it up, regarding the whole aspect of we have a, a great deal of people going into the workforce, right, with, with uh, underrepresentation, particularly, I say, early career. Mm -hmm. The challenge now is that pull through that you kind of talked about. What can we do to help that pull through of getting, you know, broader representation across the more senior ranks or mid-career to senior ranks going forward? Yeah, I'll, I'll take a shot at that, and I'm sure others will have comments. But, you know, it's it's frustrating to me that you don't see a lot of data out there that that would tell you, you know, like a Harvard Business Review study, there could be, I'm just not aware, but of, of, of the definitive reasons for why some of these groups, you know, don't progress at the same rate and, or, or leave the workforce. Uh, I, I, I think... You know, I've I've been in, involved in a lot of uh, forums talking to to women engineers, and there's a there's myriad reasons, uh, but there's certain things we can do. Uh, you know, in terms of the the culture, you know, a culture of inclusiveness uh, at a workplace, uh, being more flexible about work arrangements or part time opportunities, uh, and so I. I think there are some things, certainly uh, mentorship plays a big role in that. Uh, people want to see people above them that look like them, and and, all, and, and I think it's the responsibility of, of, of those to, to kind of help pull. Uh, and, uh, and, and so there's a lot that we can do, uh, and we just need to, to do more because the numbers you know, whether it's advancement in, you know, up through management and executive ranks, up through technical ranks, it's pretty consistent that there's a fall off across the board. Any other questions? There's a question over here. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, Yo, oh, need, thank you. Yeah. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Colonel Steve Hastead. I'm the head of the biology department at the U.S. Air Force Academy. And uh, my question is particularly uh, relates to the resourcing at the, the college and university level for, as we're, as we're targeting and trying deliberately to bring in more diverse representation from students that don't have those high SAT scores, that don't have that access through their high school programs. Um, I've, I've been very excited at the academy that we are now shifting some of our focus through some graduates and endowments away from the honors program towards more of the academic success center to robust our, our infrastructure to help those students that don't come in with those high test scores, high SATs, whatever. I'm just, I'm just curious, uh, sir, particularly at the Rensselaer level, what, what are you doing as you, you mentioned that you're, you've moved away from the, the calc, the chemistry, some of those prerequisites. Well, I'm, I'm curious as to the level of resourcing that you have at, at your university to help you know, bring those students into the fold so that we can then retain and, and, and continue to develop them. Thank well, you. Well, there's a number of uh, programs that, that we rely on heavily. So, so we do uh, bridge programming uh, early on, early access uh, programs for students. One of the things we started this year, uh, the pandemic has really taken a toll on our, our, our students from the standpoint of they're not quite as prepared as previous years, especially in the calculus, uh, physics, uh, calculus-based physics. So this summer we actually ran a trial with our students using uh, the Alex programming uh, offered by McGraw-Hill and we offered it to uh, a select number of our freshman students for free that we identified that we said may have some issues and uh, because it was volunteer uh, we, we were a little uh, little on the uh, we, we, we were overly optimistic that uh, students would do it. Uh, so we, we offered it to about uh, 600 and about 300 did it. So we got a 50% uh, hit rate. Uh, and, and the beauty of it was that uh, it was self-paced. 
AI driven, so no faculty involved, all AI driven. And uh, the students completed it, you know, like I said, at their own pace. And our goal is to really look at how did it affect their fall freshman uh, classes. And so this, this spring we'll be doing the analysis to determine. But institutions are going to have to do a better job uh, of preparing the students. Uh, one of the things I'll say is, you know, uh, uh, I was the dean of engineering at California State University, Los Angeles, for many years. And before student success was even popular, we put in programming in 2007, 2008. And uh, the program's still going now. And, you know, we've had, they had, they've had success rates uh, that are probably, I, I can't think of anyone who's been able to meet the same success rates. And what I mean by that is freshman, freshman to freshman, when I got there, we were at 60% retention. Uh, there were 60% of them coming back uh, from fall to fall. When I left in 2013, my last class, we were at 92% of them returning. And it was because of the programming that we put in place, uh, both summer bridge programming and year-round programming to help them with their early on coursework. That's really exciting about the, uh, you actually have a perfect test case there. You invited 600, 300 applied, and so now you can look at, you know who you invited, you can see the test population and the, yep, yep. that's great, that's fantastic. You know, the only thing I would add to that is um, I think it's really important that you look at all these different programs that we're, we're going to do. I mean, I think what we learned over COVID um, is it was hard on everyone, but we also, learn how to deliver things differently because we had no choice. Uh, if, if you look at some of the schools that are um, a lot of two, two programs, a lot of three, two programs that are trying to help with those first couple years where you can have much smaller classes, much more intense focus on the science and math so that, that kids can be successful, um, I think it's very frustrating um, that you can't bridge that gap. And, uh, you know, we have to get out of this. I mean, when I went to school, and actually when my two sons that are engineers went to school, we were still saying, you know, the professor would say, look to your left, look to the right, only one of you is going to be left in four years. And we have to stop doing that. It's a yes and and a not a no but. Um, because we simply do not have enough people. And so we have to get better at this. I mean, our ability to to support a modern economy with the infrastructure depends on that. There's a question here. I guess along those lines, you know, having worked in manufacturing, we see a huge shortage in the trades and people going into the trades with a lot of the younger generations starting to pursue um, more degreed professions. And then you also mentioned earlier that 70% of women who go into engineering end up leaving. I mean, do we have a firm understanding on the data of where these people are going to in, so that we can do more focused targets of redirecting in the STEM? Um, SWE's been doing, I mean, SWE's different than the other affinity groups because NSF has been funding them to be doing deep research into this since the 90s. Um, and so they look at it. Um, I, I think it's not where they're going to, it's where they're running from. Because 80% of that 70% say they can't stand the workplace culture. And I can tell you, you know, my 30 year olds, the boys feel the same way. All right, we need work, work life balance. We need to value what they do as other professions value better than we do in a lot of cases. And so um, I think those changes are coming because we have this shortage, so we're seeing that. Um, but it's in a lot of cases, it's the culture. It's the, you know, the commoditization of what we're doing. It's, it's about you know, the race to the bottom instead of the race to the top. And so as you're looking at how we're moving forward, we are looking at, that doesn't work. You need to have innovation. You need to have all this input. And I can tell you, we're actually having a meeting um, this, this month um, with a number of senior officials um, in the administration because there's a lot of money being spent on workforce development. And a lot of it is going in block grants to the states. And we haven't seen, I mean, we've been flat in our, from trades 
you know, from the laborer on the construction site to the bus driver to the designer to the surveyor to the CEO. We have been flat for more than a decade. And if you look at the demographics of high school, you're seeing 10 to 20% less kids in high school because they're not there in the next decade. Big problems unless we start thinking about this holistically. And those schools that do are gonna win and there's gonna be a lot of schools that are gonna be out of business. Think about a 10 or 20% cut in your customers and how do you deal with that? So I think we're at a point now where we have to think drastically different and you know, maybe it's that um, working with a contractor that if you hire somebody, and there's, there's DOTs around the country that are doing this, they'll pay first and last month's rent, okay? They'll get transportation for these individuals. They will put them into a skilled trade program. When you graduate from that, they're willing to then invest in a two-year degree if that's what you wanna do, and then after that, invest in a four-year degree so we can build them from the ground up as opposed to just saying, well, you can either go this way or this way. Um, we have to have flexibility and we have to have room for technologists, technicians, administrators, um, and engineers. And it's okay that you don't have to be, it's not all or nothing. Um, we've been in this long-term thing that it's gotta be all or nothing. And that's just not working for us. Norman? Cool. Yes. I just, just wanna add one, one point is, is not directly related but it's in the same area you know we have a leaky buckets in more, most of corporate America it's one of the biggest issues but I it, today part of it is due to the success that we've had this is very sounds weird but, but stay with me for a second my generation came from a place where it was very difficult to get ahead because we're minorities and then we went to work at a corporation where it was very difficult to get ahead because we're minorities, so we, we found support, we found ERGs, we found sponsors, and over time, we've grown. I look at, at my company, I promoted the first, second, and, th and fourth women to upper management in Europe in the history of the company, and it took the CEO intervention to be able to get it done. Today, is 51% female, so, so it is tremendous progress. The problem is, it doesn't match the progress that we had in academia. In, in academia, if you're a minority in school, there are no issues. If you're Asian and your friend is African-American and the other friend is gay, they're just friends. They're not black or white, or, they're just friends. And then they come to corporate America where you're different and you need to find support or whatever, and they don't like it because they, that's not their life. So our culture in corporate America is not advancing as fast as, as it is in academia. So a lot of employees get disgusted with a, with a, uh, with a, uh, with a corporate culture and they leave. And, and, and that corporate culture, if you're, if you're an employee who's been there 10 years, is actually fantastic compared to what it was. Cool. It's just not good enough yet. So we have to work, we have to pivot in corporate America and work to make that closer to the, to the reality that students live on campus. Thank you.